mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be saying to yourself, how ironic that in 2017, the year that marks the 500th anniversary of Martin Luther's nailing of his 95 theses to the castle church door in Wittenberg, that we should also be observing with such great devotion and vestments and readings and candles, the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven. Surely, as one of the most prominent figures and leaders of the Reformation era, Martin Luther would be appalled at Marian devotion, the Hail Mary, rosaries, and the various anthems that we sing and use for the Virgin Mary. But you would be wrong and quite mistaken. While Luther certainly condemned the excesses of purchasing indulgences and the forgiveness of sins as a financial exchange, and also the very worst excesses of Mariolatry, Luther maintained a central and a significant place for the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I believe it's worth persisting in an open, courteous, and nuanced dialogue with Luther's vast theology, as well as his Marian devotion, and all may benefit from such a dialogue. Lutherans and Methodists, Baptists and Catholics of both the Roman and the Anglican persuasions, as well as good Episcopalians. One of the key insights that we have gained since the Reformation era is that that has been taught to us by our Eastern brothers and sisters in the Orthodox Church. It is the beauty and the importance of icons and iconography. We have gained great insights from them in their use and meditation of such beautiful articles of devotion. Their importance in Christian devotion is almost unparalleled in the West. You see, the manner, the habit, the tone and nature of our seeing is a vital and central importance. Sight, that which grasps one immediately in seeing an icon such as the one that we have here at the liturgical east end of the church, Our Lady of Perpetual Pity or Our Lady of Perpetual Mercy, immediately one is grasped by the presence the sight of the icon. You see, in the Christian tradition, there are ways of gazing upon the world that can draw us closer to God. And there are ways of gazing upon the world that can distance us from God. The first manner is iconic, the second is idolatrous. 
the difference between an icon and an idol. One draws us into relationship, the other alienates us from God. Icons, and most especially those of the Blessed Virgin Mary, attract us because they mediate an encounter with the depth of what is depicted, opening not just onto the truth of the thing imaged, but also onto the creator of the reality imaged. Icons become a means by which the God who created the entire universe returns our gaze through the medium of creation. This is part of the mystery of the incarnation. And God thereby encounters us in a luminosity that far exceeds the creation itself. That may sound rather complicated. It's actually quite straightforward. Icons are symbols and pointers and show us the way into the divine. And yet more, they show us the way that the divine relates to the world. The icon waits upon you to respond. In a rather complicated phrase, Jean-Luc Marion observes that icons unbalance human sight in order to engulf it in an infinite depth. In other words, the icon shows us the divine, that the divine may grasp us. The idol, which is the exact opposite, attracts by flattening our gaze, by subsuming it in the spectacle of the surface. The desire of the eyes, which cometh not from the Father, but from the world, as the author of the first epistle of St. John says. An engagement with an idol is not shaped by receptivity to the gaze of another. It is not grasping us or drawing us into the divine, but rather is a mere reflection. Idolatry is an ocular exit and a return in which the object does little more than reflect ourselves back to us with an aura of our holiness, hallowing our biases and our blind spots. As a great mystic once said, if you have found God easily, perhaps it is not God you have found. The divine, the presence of God, seeks us, desires us. Idolatry merely points back to us. One of the important and essential elements of depictions of the Virgin Mary is that she never points to herself. She always presents her child, her son. She points to him and tells the church to focus our gaze, not upon the merely human, but the human as redeemed in Christ, made whole, made perfect, that we may come to share in that heavenly kingdom. 
where with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, all the saints rejoice and sing. Amen.